How long has life existed on earth? Good. For over 3000 million years, right? And it has been changing constantly ever since. Now children, scientists all agree that living organisms are coming from a common ancestor. Using evidence from all the different sources, scientists concluded that the diversity of life that we find on Earth is due to the changes that happened over thousands of millions of years. Now, during this time, the first living organisms somehow gave rise to the millions of organisms that exist today. All present day, all the life forms that we see today, where are they coming from? Yes, they have descended from and are related to those that live in the past, who were the ancestors. Now, all present day life forms, the life forms we see today, may look different from those that they have descended from. Why? Because they became modified. They changed from one generation to another. What do we call that process of change? That process of change is called evolution. Welcome to evolution. Bearing in mind our last video, which focused on the difference between a hypothesis and a theory, what do you think? Do you think that evolution is a hypothesis or is it a theory and why? Very good! Evolution is a theory and not a hypothesis. Why? Because children, Evolution as a theory has been confirmed through multiple lines of evidence. Notice the word evidence. In the beginning, it would have been regarded as just a scientific hypothesis, right? Until all the different pieces of evidence had been carefully looked at by the scientists. They were discussed amongst the scientists. They were written about and they were thoroughly tested. And then what happened to that hypothesis? It turned or it became a theory. Let's take a look at what was the evidence for evolution. Right. Firstly, scientists have presented fossils. Right. Under the heading paleontology. Paleontology, children, is the study of fossils. Right. What are fossils then? Fossils are the preserved remains like the bones and the teeth or impressions like footprints of organisms that lived in the past. And by studying fossils, these paleontologists were able to develop a good understanding of the past life forms. So over the years, what have the paleontologists been doing? They have been collecting a number of fossil remains of different species of animals. The scientists were actually able to determine the age of these fossils, right? How? By using radioactive isotopes. They are present in a rock and they provide a good way of determining the age of a fossil. The oldest fossils of organisms that scientists have found so far are determined to be about 3.5 billion years old. These rocks contain microfossils that resemble bacteria that still exist today. In addition to determining the age of a fossil, right, which indicates roughly when the organism existed, scientists also determine the characteristics of the organism from a study of its fossil. Very important children, because knowledge of these characteristics allows us to see relationship amongst the different organisms. And this is usually represented in a phylogenetic tree as evidence for evolution. 
Now let's look at another evidence for evolution comparing anatomy. Here we will focus on the homologous structures, which are similar structures but have different functions and were thought to be from a common ancestor. For example, our forearm and the wing of a bat or a bird. The plan is very similar. Do you agree? Yes, but the functions of these two organs are different. Now, scientists interpret the presence of homologous structures to mean what? To mean that all the species which show homologous structures have arisen from a common ancestor, which became adapted then to live in different environments. An example of this is the common basic plan of all vertebrates' limbs, right? Consisting of the same set of bones, but which have become modified for different functions. They have changed over the years to perform different functions. For example, for flight in birds, or for digging in moles, or for swimming in seals, and for walking in horses. Can you see? Each of these organisms have the same limb, but performing different functions. The limbs will be playing a different role in each of these vertebrates. So what are the scientists' interpretation of the presence of homologous structures? They interpret it to mean that all the species which show homologous structures have arisen from a common ancestor which became adapted to live in different environments. Because their structures are so similar in appearance, even though their functions are totally different, but because of their similarities, they are considered to be coming from the same line of evolution, which means they share a common ancestor. Remember, when we speak about all these evidences, it has to go back to ancestry, common ancestry, because this is what the basic premise of evolution is. The next one is biogeography. Biogeography, right, is the study of where the species occur and why. So on their voyages, scientists noticed biogeographical features that suggested evolution, right? And the fact that organisms look so different in different parts of the world was enough evidence for evolution. Now children, when Darwin studied the organisms on the Galapagos Islands, what did he realize? Yes, he realized that the organisms resembled the species on the mainland of South America. But they all developed into new species. Darwin realized something. He realized that species tend to be more closely related to the species from the same area than to species with the same lifestyle and form but living in different areas. Biogeography speaks about the similarities between organisms that are living closer to one another in the same biome as opposed to organisms that are living further apart. Closely related organisms in the same biome have corresponding characteristics, right? Or adaptations that will help them to survive in their respective biomes. Now, evidence under molecular biology and genetic. What do you think molecular biology is concerned with? Yes, it is concerned with the study of proteins and nucleic acids, which hold a lot of information about an organism's ancestry. And that is why genetics provides detailed and convincing evidence of biological evolution. For example, the sequencing of genes show relationships to other species and they allow an evolutionary line to be traced from the earliest to the latest organisms. Now, evidence of evolution from molecular biology shows that all organisms arise from common ancestors. Why? 
because they have similar molecules like nucleic acids and proteins. They also have the same genetic code which is used to make identical proteins. And the functions of many proteins are alike, right? Example, similar enzymes are used in cellular respiration as well as in the making of cell components. All of these, protein synthesis, respiration, DNA, are very common amongst the organisms. And that is why scientists say that they may have had similar ancestors. So let's recap the evidence from molecular biology and genetics. What do we understand there? We understand the scientists said that all life forms are related. Why? Because they have identical DNA structure and identical protein synthesis, right? And scientists have been able to determine how closely related two species may be. How? By comparing the degree of similarity in, for example, the sequencing or the arrangement of the genes, DNA, the proteins, as well as the respiratory pathways. I hope you enjoyed our video. Like and subscribe.